take all of the serums and extra mask juice off. Speaking of which, now I'm gonna take off my 24 karat boot mask. Why would you spend so much money on masks and serums to wipe them off? I'm hoping this is makeup. 58 steps, 58 steps. Today, we are reacting to Shay Mitchell's 58 step beauty guide. From face masks to false eyelashes, I hope that most of these are makeup. Who the f has time? 58 steps. I am so sorry. What planet are you living in? Now, I actually know who Shay Mitchell is, but it's not because she was in movies or whatever. She has a YouTube channel and I used to watch it. Her YouTube channel, she used to do like vlogs. They were actually really fun and kind of high quality behind the scenes cinematography of her life. I really loved, but because of that, I know who she is. I know she sells the alcoholic beverages. I know that she does uh, the attractive things and I am very attracted to her vibe and her personality. And I'm like, yeah, like this is someone that I feel I could be friends with. The question is, could I do my skincare routine next to this person or would I cringe in face masks and walnut scrubs? That is the question that we are going to answer today. I'm going to try to remove all bias from my previous experience watching her vlogs and just focus on the skincare because you know that we like to scrutinize, analyze, and learn from other people's routines. And while I am a medical esthetician, your acne big sister, and a figment of the internet, I am not a doctor or dermatologist. And I am not someone who has a 58 step skincare routine nor do I understand why somebody needs one. So tell me more, Shay. I need to find out what the f is going on because curiosity killed the cat and apparently my middle name is Meow. Hi guys, Shay Mitchell here. I'm going to take you through my skincare routine and my everyday makeup look. There are quite a few steps, so stick with me. Every single morning when I wake up, I may or may not check my phone. So when I come in the bathroom, the first thing I have to do is wash my hands. So my next step is my cleanser. This cleanser is super gentle. It's like the perfect uh, sort of balance for my skin. I found this at a drugstore in Canada and then I add about that much. It is Shawnee Darden. Okay, I see you, Shay. Do we start with these little cleansy scrub a dub a doos or do we start with a cleanser? These little scrubby doos are like a budget version of the Foreo. The Foreo is like the upgraded, actually plausible and money spendable version of the Clairsonic that used to scratch apart our faces and our epidermises. Epidermises, epidermises. Somebody who knows the English, please tell me. Clairsonic is out of business for many reasons, which we've covered, but the Foreo is actually a really good cleansing device. It's definitely luxury, but it's good and it doesn't harbor bacteria. And these little silicone pads are very similar. Now the one that she's using is manual, so it doesn't actually vibrate. It's not automatic like a Foreo is. The Foreo claims that like, you know, that vibration can help things penetrate deeper and lift gunk out of the skin easier. But if you're looking for a gentle physical exfoliation, this is a safer way to do it. And you know what? It's really budget friendly. I wonder if we should try to do half exfoliation with like a Foreo versus one of these handheld things. Measure the thickness of our skin or like do a surface hemoglobin test again. I'm curious, but seeing Shay use a really good cleanser plus a budget scrubby brush, we're off to a great start. I just, I'm worried about these 58 other steps. 57, math. And I feel like this also helps just like exfoliate a little bit as well. This Shawnee Darden cleanser is actually a cleansing serum and it's actually really good. We'll take a peek at the ingredients on Sephora. It's $38, so it also doesn't cost an arm and a leg. This has water, C14 to 16, olefin sulfonate. We have a PEG 16, which is polyethylene glycol 16, macadamia glyceride. So these are going to be nice and non-stripping. glucoside, glycerin. We're seeing a lot of ingredients that we see in both moisturizers and cleansers. So this is not a very stripping cleanser or exfoliating cleanser the way others might be. This does have some oat, it has some olive, it has some chicory leaf, hickory, chicory, trees. I'm losing all of the words today. English, math, agriculture. It is just not botany. It's just not in my brain cells today. But overall, it's got some great ingredients. It's vegan and cruelty free. It seems to work well with her skin. It looks like she's going a little bit aggressively with this, but I actually don't know how hard she's pressing. And you know, as long as she's gonna wear a sunscreen, which let's just hope to the algorithmic YouTube and dermatology angels that she wears a freaking sunscreen. But as long as she's following up with that SPF, this morning exfoliation does not look half bad. I would just say do it two to three times a week and not every day. So I keep a little fridge in my bathroom 
And this guy is one of the things that I keep in there. It's a little ice roller. Oh, it just feels so nice. Ah, the ice rollers. So we have screamed about putting ice on people's faces, specifically about the somewhat rare but concerning fact that it can cause frost nip or frost bite, or it can worsen rosacea. It can promote vascular damage to those little capillaries that can appear in the skin. We don't love ice on the skin, but simultaneously, she's using some cooling device like a skincare fridge with a cool roller. Now these cool rollers do work. It's kind of like, would you put ice directly on like a swollen joint? No, you would put a towel down before you put the bag of peas on it or something, right? Same kind of concept, especially on the delicate skin of the face. Now the difference between ice and some of these ice rollers or devices is that these devices conduct heat or cryotherapy, cold therapy differently. They can be expensive and overpriced, like you could just put a spoon in the fridge, especially around the eye area. But you know what? This one is $14 on Amazon. $14 is not bad. <laughs> I love that she's using budget options. This actually seems really good. It seems like a lot of other people love it. There's 14,000 ratings on this. Shay Mitchell, you might be making me try things. I said I wasn't gonna buy new things. Yet, here we are. Essarora Ice Roller. The best beautifying tip ever. Is it a tip or is it a tool? Also, this looks like it was made by my sixth grade cousin's son on some budget version of Photoshop, but you know, Advertising and Photoshop aside, let's see what this has. Cold therapy, massage bar, detachable head. Oh no. Suitable for all skin type. Battery free, I thought it said butterfly free. And it's perfect gift. Okay, well fantastic. For $14, you know, I would appreciate this as a stocking stuffer for sure. A lot of people are really happy with it. Ooh, one Amazon reviewer is showing that the cool sensation felt really nice, but it definitely made this person's face red and tingly. It has a light jelly-like substance on the roller apparently. This is a person who maybe has rosacea, maybe has something else vascular going on with the skin should not be using this. So buyer beware. And this is why we don't rub ice on our skin, you know, without testing it first. <laughs> this looks cruelty free and vegan. I am adding this to my cart. Check back in four weeks, kids. <laughs> Make sure that you're subscribed so when we post it, you don't miss it. One thing I love to do is uh, do under eye masks. It just make, allows your makeup to set on really nice without being super crazy underneath. Now, you're gonna see quite a few masks. And the reason why I like them is just because I feel like they're very hydrating. I put them on, I don't have to think about it. I love the drama of it. I think they look funny. I like to scare people when I'm traveling especially or when I'm just at home. Is that not the truth? I was first gonna scream about eye creams, but you know what? I don't hate under eye masks. I think of them as push-up bras for your under eye bags. Under eye bags can be largely genetic. We have these little fat pads under our eyes and we have a septum. And if the fat herniates out from there, it actually causes these physical bags and you know, gravity and you know, living and laughing definitely can add to that. Some people do get under eye puffiness because of you know, their diets, sodium or a lack of sodium. Some people sleep on their faces. Some people just have more vasculature down here. But remember that puffiness is very different than color, which is very different than wrinkles. So keep that in mind. These patches, I think they're either from Skin Iceland or Patchology. I actually really like eye patches. My favorite ones are from Wander Beauty. And again, is there anything more bougie than just like having eye patches on and like going to the coffee shop or sitting on an airplane? Do you guys dare? Oh my God, LED face mask at a coffee shop. What's on V's face did that on TikTok and I am so ready to have a sociology experiment. Pandemic has done a lot to me. So um, if you want it, we can do it. I actually am super happy about these. I am trying to take my bias of what I think about Shay out of this, but just from a product perspective, we have not yet broken the bank. The ingredients, the products, pretty freaking good. So this is Lash Patch and it's hydrating lip gels. If I have time, I really go full out with my skincare because it's like, why not? It feels good. I'm going to also do this forehead mask. As you can see, I make a lot of expressions in my face. This is by Skin Iceland. I, oh, just 
everything feels so cool. I'm like a skin mask superhero right now. So there we go. A skincare mask here. She does look like, what is that? Elasta Woman? Isn't that a cartoon? Isn't that acting? I don't know. If I were a superhero, I would definitely also want to be a skincare superhero. I love face masks. I feel like they're very relaxing. They can take time, but I'm hoping that she doesn't spend all this time every single day. Skin Iceland actually has microneedling under eye patches. Microneedling and under eye products, two things I hate, but in this patch, they actually did amazing things for me. I have not tried this Skin Iceland forehead one, nor do I use a lot of lip masks. She might be making me spend a bunch of money. Shay, stop it. I'm very curious and now I wanna try them. Also, is Vogue filtering her? Or is this her natural skin? I love that she's showing us her wrinkles. Wow, real people expressing real skin and just real comments about themselves and what they see in the mirror. Isn't that nice to normalize? Wow. I am watching this on a very tiny screen at very low volume so that I can react to it and it doesn't like destroy the camera audio because ho oh, ho, have we had some bad camera audio on this channel? Hi, my name is Fuzzy slippers. But for the sake of the audio, I watch and listen on a tiny screen and I cannot tell if this is filtered or not. Internet sleuths and beautiful butterflies, do your sleuthing, please. I feel like these are very specific to the area, but this next mask that I'm gonna put on is by 111 or 111 skin, I don't know. Okay, so now we are fully covered. I never like to waste the juice of the mask, so I pour it into my hands and I rub it on my neck. This is some skin intellectual sh right here. First off, we have two things. If you view the specimen applying skincare to its epidermis, you will notice two things. Number one, this is a very rich person move to use a hydrating mask on top of other masks when not needed. But secondarily, you will also notice that the subject at hand also does a very skin intellectual action, taking the excess serum from the bag and applying it to the epidermis on the decollete and neck. This right here is interesting. Yes, this is some rich person sh because I'm sorry, who can afford to put a face mask on top of your face mask? Like you're putting a face mask on your face, but the face mask already has a serum. We don't need this many. I find this to be a little bit wasteful, but you know what? She looks like she's having fun with it. And as long as I'm hoping this is not every day, I'm not mad. And then, the serum, you guys, all of the good stuff is left in the bottom of that bag. And these companies don't even tell you that. They just expect you to throw it away. I'm like, this is where the goodies are. Sheet masks really aren't even masks per se. They're more like serums in a mask delivery form. I consider real masks things like clay masks, right? But this is a serum in a delivery form. And all of the serum is in the bottom of that bag. And she just took it and does exactly what I hope that you and I both do and puts it elsewhere on the body so that our lovely skin can absorb it and put those in ingredients to work. I don't know the 111 skin. I know some of their stuff has collagen. I'd like to find out if it's vegan or if it's animal based, but I mean, I, I will say if I had Shea Mitchell money, I might like triple mask. Was this quadruple mask? One, two, three, four, counting, numbers, math. I would quadruple mask if I had her kind of money and time. <laughs> what a luxury. I have this really cool item that I actually found when I was in Japan, because I obviously scoured their whole skin section there. Perfect lifting premium V-mask. It looks like this. <laughs> so you just put it under like this, and then you wrap it around your ears, like so. I mean, it feels like it's doing something, and I kind of figure out like those bands you use when you're working out, this is also like that. Yeah. I actually got this from Honest, thank you, Jessica. So if I wanna keep all of this on for like a good 15 minutes, then this is crucial to keeping everything intact. I have this wand, this is actually by Nurse Jamie. I'm sorry, we went to quadruple masking to like skincare mummification. Shay, what the f am I watching? To quote a facial plastic surgeon, Dr. Prem Tripathi, none of these things are going to be putting him or any other plastic surgeons out of business. Wrapping your chin is not going to get rid of fat down here. It's not going to shape the jaw at all. If you wanna shape the jaw, you can look at liposuction, you can look at injectables, you can look at Botox, you could even look at low level massage for lymphatic drainage, but just sticking a large jaw band-aid on? 
not gonna help. Um, she mentioned she got this from Jessica, like Honest. Is this an Honest Beauty product? Because I am sorry. Honestly, I cannot recommend this. I have not seen anything to support this. Like, not even to support the chin. I don't know. Talk to a dentist if you need chin or jaw support. But yeah, this, um, um, we just went all the way out. Now, this Nurse Jamie silicone mask that actually goes all the way over the top and kind of loops behind the ears. This I actually have and I can get behind. It's a little bit expensive for what it is, but it does keep sheet masks on your face. And again, if you are using one of these sheet masks slash serum delivery systems, and if it slides down your face because fucking gravity exists and maybe we want to walk around the house or do something while we're face masking and absorbing products into our skin then I know how frustrating that can be and using one of these things actually keeps it on and because you're actually pressing it into the skin could actually help you retain more of the hydration or the ingredients so that they don't evaporate off of that face mask because some of the face masks that I've used can be a little bit thin I like this one I just don't know if it's worth the money or if I would buy it again I also have a mask for my Hoo-hahs. 24 karat breast masks. Your boobs need love too, you know, especially if you're going on an event and you have a low cut dress. So here they are. Okay guys, so there you have it. Without being a little R-rated, trust that this is on correctly. Goes right around here and here. That's a Halloween costume if you're looking for one. I mean, I'm just saying. The person who should not use this is someone who has a gold allergy. They are rare, but can be uh, very uncomfortable, especially in this area. I've seen some of the boob masks. I have never done them. We can definitely look into them, but I think it's important to remember that yes, you have skin all over your body and that skin deserves a little love, uh, some gentle exfoliation, definitely some sun protection. And you know what? I respect the fact that Shay can put masks on her boobs on the internet. This is, this is the content I live for. Also, this roller from Nurse Jamie, very relaxing, not half bad, very expensive, luxury. I would put it in the fridge. Doing it over this mask, I don't think it's doing much. Uh, I think it would be better on the skin. If you wanted to use like a mummification of like 10 different face masks and stick a roller, I mean, we're, we've done a hundred things already. Let's do 10 more. Like what, it's not gonna hurt you. It's, it's not, you're not gonna notice. But I mean, if it's the act of skincare that makes it fun, <laughs> go for it. You cannot tell me that you're putting these on your titties every single day though. Who has time for this? You might as well just wear them under a bra. Like if you wear a bra, just have the face mask there and you're like, oh, I'm doing my skincare 24 seven. I think that I have to put on an LED face mask, under eye masks and some booby masks and like, I don't know, a walk to Starbucks. If I just do it in San Francisco, nobody will say anything. I think it's in the cards, my friends. What I like to do for my chest area while all of this is sitting is use this La Mer Moisturizing Cool Gel Cream. I take a little bit of it out like that. I am all for this and I am all for moisturizing the decollete, but La Mer, we were doing so good. We were using the budget ice roller. We weren't breaking the bank. We had some cool masks going on. Why are people obsessed with La Mer? Why do celebrities love to hold up $400 of Nivea plus seaweed? If you don't know the story behind La Mer, um, it is fucked up. <laughs> it's basically a physicist who burnt his hand, decided this is ouchy honey boo boo. I like sea kelp. I'm gonna take some seaweed and put it on my wounds, which is great. But then he started eating his skincare concoction. He started feeding his skincare concoction to other people at celebrity dinners in Beverly Hills. He would tell people to rub it into their eyes. And he had this magical formula because he played it music and showed it flashing lights. I'm sorry, I don't even play myself music with flashing lights. And you're telling me that skincare with preservatives, with dead ingredients, deserves a light show and some like, audio-visual stimulation. I have thoughts about Lomer, and if you wanna see all of my thoughts, you can help yourself to that video. Go ahead, there it is, yeah, add to watch later playlist. You're welcome, email it to yourself. You don't wanna miss that one. Look into other seaweed products, look into other algae products. It's basically petrolatum plus seaweed. Nivea plus seaweed, I'm sorry, I don't know what makes Lomer worth $450. And that is what I think about for that. <laughs> Okay, so now that I've taken everything off, this is the time when I like to go in and just massage my face. So if I feel like I need a little bit of extra serum before I go in and do my facial massage, I like to use this Bro Serum. This is by 123 Farm. And I just put a couple drops on my hand, rub it in. 
I do use my hands and I'm always pretty gentle with the skin and I would only do this if I had enough serum that was easy to glide over on my skin. So this wash that I use is from Wilding. I come in here about three strokes, always pretty gentle with this just because you don't want to pull your skin, otherwise it will do the opposite. Where did she learn skincare? Because yes, all of this looks really wonderful. You wanna make sure that things glide across the skin. You know, I have a bias towards touch because I think touch can be very healing, very stimulating, very connecting. It's very intimate. And um, <laughs> I love touch in my own face. I think that your hands are amazing tools. And especially when it comes to understanding the contours of your face and appreciating your face, these are the perfect ways to do it. I love what she's got going on. This serum from 123 Farm, never heard of it, but you know what? It looks like it's a rose serum that costs 30 $32, much better than the La Mer. We have some boab oil, argan oil, jojoba seed oil, which I personally love for my skin. Pomegranate, rose, lavender, patchouli. These can be a little bit irritating for some people, but overall, it seems like a really decent blend of oils and it doesn't cost a lot of money and it, like, it looks pretty cute. The gua sha as well. A lot of people love gua sha's. They're definitely not bad. Just don't spend 200 bucks on one. They are nice stone massagers. You don't need one in your routine, but if you're gonna use one, uh, she's doing it right. She's not digging at the skin. You know, she's not causing any potential damage to tissues inside of the skin or to muscle. Uh, some people go way too hard with gua sha's. It's like we're trying to relax. We're not trying to strip the muscles off of our tendons or bone, okay? I like to give it a little zinger when I hit the end. And then I come in with this flatter side, pull that. So I am quite a believer in anything you can do to deep puff your skin. So if I'm getting ready for an event or, you know, any sort of photo shoot, then I like to make sure that a few days before I don't load up on sodium because my skin does puff up quite easily. So I drink a lot of water before an event. I don't eat a lot of salt. Uh, and then I'm a big believer in lymphatic drainage, especially for my body, but also for my face. You really do notice just how much your skin has just released a lot of the, the fluid. And again, I sleep on my face. That's why sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I feel a little bit like a puffer fish. I love that she brings up lymphatic drainage. This is something that we talk about here on this channel all the time. And if you're subscribed and liked, you're a skin intellectual, you know this, but lymphatic drainage is really relaxing and can be really important. Our heart pumps blood throughout our entire body, but our lymphatic system, which goes throughout our entire body, doesn't have that pump. Things like muscle stimulation, exercise is really important to make sure that that fluid is moving. There's like two liters of fluid that's processed by our bodies every day. And sometimes that fluid can hang out in tissues. And she did mention she is a face sleeper. So when you wake up, that can definitely pool up in the face. And like we mentioned, especially in the under eyes. She also mentioned a low sodium diet. And I do want to touch on this just a little bit. Um, yes, eating too much salt can cause fluid retention and bloating, but also eating too little sodium can cause diarrhea, bloating, gastrointestinal upset, among other things. A lot of people don't realize, but if you have like an extremely low sodium diet, you can also have bloating and water retention. The body likes to be in homeostasis and sodium as well as other things such as potassium, calcium, etc. They are essential to our body's health and well-being and like even just to allow our heart to beat properly and for our muscles to contract and our nerves to send signals. And this is why it's very important not to demonize a specific food group or ingredient or nutrient. And I don't think that Shay is intending to do that. But I know that in celebrity culture, you know, the diet teas and the restricting of things is unfortunately a lot more common, or at least media shouts about that all the time. And um, for anyone who is thinking about changing up their diet, just remember, you can have too much sodium, but also too little sodium could be a very bad thing and also lead to unwanted bloating, among other issues with the body. The last massager that I use is this wand by Shawty Darden. And I just come in and again, I'm always just sort of holding my skin taut a little bit. So this facial wand is from Shawnee Darden. It's like one of those, you know those machine guns that are on those really, does anybody else get those super weird YouTube commercials where it's like the slow motion of that like massage gun. And I'm like, how do you know that my trapezius is tight? Like 
<laughs> Google, Amazon, stop eavesdropping on me. But this Shani Darden massager is interesting. They say that it uses sound waves, um, you know, to penetrate the skin to help with fine lines and wrinkles. This is not microcurrent, so this is different from something like the New Face or the Zip, or I really love the RF age device from Medicube because like, I don't know, their shocky shocky is just different, okay? It hits different. This is a good one. I don't know if it's worth the money. I haven't spent the $400 on it. Shani Darden is amazing. She's a celebrity esthetician. She's an expert esthetician. She's worked in the industry with doctors and derms and she knows her stuff. And most of the things from her line are excellent. This is one thing that I just haven't tried. And um, I probably would, yeah, maybe I should get it. I don't know. Um, I feel like I need to understand a little bit more about it. And from what I've seen on their website or Sephora's website, it just doesn't compel me at this point, especially since I've had pretty good luck with um, radio frequency and with microcurrent. I really enjoy those treatments. This is something I would consider. I'm not gonna write it off yet, but this definitely isn't something that you should do, you know, a payment plan for or things like that, in my opinion. Shay definitely knows how to throw a skincare party. I mean, we're five minutes and 42 seconds in and we've already done the works. I feel like this skincare routine right now is becoming the vegan meatloaf of the product world. Like this is like every product except for the Secret by Qterra radio frequency microneedling, which uh, you should never do at home, but you should definitely consider with a dermatologist. After all that is done, I'm actually going to take a warm cloth and just take everything down a little bit just because when I'm gonna be applying makeup after this, I don't want anything to slip and slide. And just kind of take all of the serums and extra mask juice off. Speaking of which, now I'm gonna take off my 24 karat boot mask. Why would you spend so much money on masks and serums to wipe them off? I understand that she's applying makeup and I would understand that she doesn't want it to pill up, especially if she had a lot of products with niacinamide or had like a gummy formula that could happen. But here's a concept, maybe don't use 15 sheet masks and you won't get the gummy residue left behind. You know, the way a lot of serums and sheet masks and products work is that they have an active and a delivery system. And the active is the thing, the ingredient that's medically proven or hopefully proven to do the work, such as something like salicylic acid or vitamin C. And then you have the vehicle and the vehicle is kind of what that's suspended in. Is it a thick moisturizer? Is it a penetrating serum or a hydrating toner, right? But certain products can leave a film behind on the skin, either because those molecules are so large that they don't penetrate or because other things in the formula evaporate off, such as phenoxyethanol or some aromatic compounds, and that leaves some stuff behind. Now that's fine, but you don't want it to pill up. But normally that's actually what gives the skin some nice bounce. It kind of protects the skin, conditions it throughout the day. To solve the problem, use less products. First things first, I like to come in with an under eye cream. This one is by Kiehl's. I'll take about that much. Look at how beautiful her under eyes are. I'm sorry, what is this under eye cream trying to treat? The discoloration is not bad. She doesn't have under eye bags because we literally used these amazing under eye patches and facial rollers and masks and mummified our faces. She doesn't have fine lines or wrinkles. Like, what are we using an eye cream for? For just the sake of using an eye cream? The Kiehl's one is one that I don't support because it's not vegan or cruelty free. I know that people like Dr. Shah, Munib Shah of Dr. Orly, he really appreciates this one. It's not my favorite. And from a lot of what people have said is that it kind of is thicker and it can hydrate, but like it's a lot for the under eye area. And again, I always go back to a lot of eye creams are just overpriced moisturizers, same basic ingredients in a tiny jar that they're overcharging you for. So as long as you don't have Melia or as long as you can find a moisturizer, that works under the eye area and under your makeup, just use that. Maybe she's doing this for makeup application since it sounds like we're doing this, you know, to kind of take on the day. What is this product doing for her? Her under eyes are gorgeous and I, I just, I don't see how this thing is going to help. I'd say my skin actually didn't change that much when I was pregnant, except for the melasma. Thank you. It's fine. Little reminders. My little gift. That is so sweet. It is a little gift. Her melasma and her hyperpigmentation is a little gift. Just the way my flaws, my little acne scars are features. They are badges that show that I went through some shit and got through it. You guys, I love her outlook. Again, trying to remove my thoughts of her as a person and just focus on the products because this eye cream is not it, nor is the La Mer. But holy shit, 
I love her philosophy behind this. She specifically mentions pregnancy melasma. You should speak with both your derm and your OBGYN about that, especially anything involving pregnancy. But some people do get this melasma mask or this hyperpigmentation during pregnancy. That usually is from these hormonal changes. Specifically when it comes to dark spots or dark under eye areas or these things, you want to use something that's actually going to help. You want to use sunscreen to prevent it from getting worse, but you also want to use something like a tyrosinase inhibitor. Hydroquinone from a prescribing physician. You could also get over-the-counter alpha arbutin. You could get vitamin C. You could get licorice. Even niacinamide. A lot of these things are great to kind of help with pigmentation, either to stop it from being created in the first place or to stop your skin cells from sharing it with other skin cells so that it doesn't get transferred from the melanocytes to the keratinocytes. Now, when we look at this Kiehl's, it's a creamy avocado thing. It's got shea butter. It's got avocado. It's got like some sodium PCA, but there is nothing in here that is going to dramatically help with pigmentation or any of these under eye spots that she's talking about. I would absolutely switch this out for a very gentle, you know, vitamin C serum or even a vitamin C eye cream. If someone is obsessed with an eye cream and just has to have one in their routine, use products that actually have ingredients that are going to help the condition. There are very few eye creams that I actually like. There are a few. One of them has sunscreen in it. Big shocker there. And we actually have a video on that as well as a video for people who should use an eye cream because there are a few people who actually should. Looking at Shay, I don't think she needs one, but then again, that's my personal opinion. The next thing that I do for my under eyes, which honestly is a big secret, it's this Basic Organics Vitamin E Wheat Germ Oil Aloe Vera. So I put about that much on, rub it in, and it's pretty sticky. So I just go in there, I pat, I also pat a little bit above my eye. I put it on heavier before I go to sleep at night because in my mind, it feels like it helps my eyebrow scrub. <laughs> Put that over, a little bit over my lips because it's vitamin E, so it doesn't hurt anybody. When I travel, I'm a lot more curious about skincare. So I always come home with a suitcase of new masks to try or chin straps, as you guys saw earlier. I love seeing what other people use and what also like natural things. I know my mom growing up in the Philippines is you know such a huge believer of coconut oil and just everywhere, skin, nails, cooking, hair, you name it, coconut oil. Um, so I always find that to be really interesting when I travel, just getting a better sense of like what they use, what they've grown up using and what their, you know, secrets are. This Basics E-Oil is $5.99. Very interesting. This looks like an occlusive and it's very basic. When we look at the ingredients, we have wheat germ oil, vitamin E, and then aloe vera. I like this. Like, I like it a lot. If you have, you know, a dry skin patch, if you have some form of dermatitis and your derma proves that you use this, if you've got like chapped cuticles or chapped lips, it looks really, really great. This is kind of for the same person who might want to use like petrolatum or Vaseline. It could be super heavy if you do have oilier skin. But you know what? This looks really good and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Most of these so far are not half bad. This is a Super Serum Advanced Plus by IS Clinical. It just helps brighten your skin. I do about three drops. Is this brand called IS Clinical or Is Clinical? Does anybody know? I would like to know. This Super Serum is super expensive. It's $155 and I'm just like, why? Why is this $155? Now, cost aside, I actually like this for her. This has the ingredients that she should be applying under her eyes. She says three drops on the face. No, put this in those areas that has melasma. This has ascorbic acid, a form of vitamin C. It has hyaluronic acid, so it acts as a humectant to the skin. This also has arbutin, which we just spoke about. This has urea, this has zinc sulfate, this has glucose, which can also kind of help. This has a mushroom extract. This is great. It's clinical, it's really expensive. You should not have to spend $155 on this serum. You can find some of these ingredients for much less that are still stable and good. Overall, these ingredients I love to see, especially for her. And I would just love to see her, you know, put these in that under eye area as long as she doesn't get it in the conjunctiva or actually bother her eye with this in any way. And you know what vitamin C pairs really well with? SPF, your BFF. The question is, where the f is the sunscreen? Because we're a lot of products in and I have not heard any mention of sun protection and especially with melasma and with hyperpigmentation, sun protection is one of the best things that you can do to prevent that melasma and that hyperpigmentation from showing up and happening. <sighs> shall continue, shall keep on carrying on as we all used to say back in the 2013s and 14s. Does everyone remember those? We had like t-shirts, mugs, like people put it as like their, oh my God, their Facebook profile picture. Does anybody have Facebook anymore? Keep on skincare mummificationing.
while you're vacationing. How about that? I always have to have sunscreen. So this is again by Eyes Clinical. This is SPF 50 plus. Shay, you speak to my heartstrings. This is amazing. Oh, I'm so happy. I was, the fact that I'm this emotional over skincare should be slightly concerning, but the passion shows that I care, okay? Anyways, I don't know this sunscreen, but it's SPF 50 plus. We'll take a look at the ingredients. I am so happy to see this on her face. Okay, so now that that is sort of soaking in, I also have to come in and take care of my lips right now just to give them some extra moisture so when I'm applying my makeup, not all crackly. While she hydrates those lips, we're gonna analyze and scrutinize this sunscreen. And this is so nice to see. This is Is Clinical. This is $45. This is a great price for a sunscreen, especially from Is Clinical. Why are there other serums nearly 200 bucks? This sunscreen appears to be a mineral tinted formula. It is broad spectrum. You know, the SPF value only shows you how long that formula is going to work for UVB rays while you're exposed to the sun. So that's why you have to reapply sunscreen regularly. And if your sunscreen is not broad spectrum, or if it doesn't say PA++++++, or if you're in the UK, if it doesn't say UVA and have like a circle around it, it's probably not full spectrum and it's not helping protect against those UVA rays as well as the UVB rays. But this one does, which is great to see. This is basically titanium dioxide and zinc oxide, which is what we normally see in these mineral sunscreen filters or these inorganic sunscreen filters. And they can be a little pasty. So it looks like this one is tinted. Now we've also got other ingredients in here that are hydrating or nice for the skin. We have caprylic triglyceride, which we see a lot inside of moisturizers. We have octidecal neopentanoate, which is really nice, kind of makes this cream, makes the sunscreen sit on the skin well. Soteral alcohol, glycerol stearate, PG100 stearate. We do have some copolymers, some tocopherol, which is nice to see. Uh, some more tocopherol acetate, some vitamin E. We like this. Again, there's nothing in here that's like absolutely mind blowing, but this looks like a really good and honestly applied to her skin really creamily. Is that a word, creamily? Is creamily like the sister of the word moist? You know how some people hate the word moist? I think we just created like an evil step twin called creamily. Anyways, this applied very creamily to her face and it looked like it blends in well. I would like to see a little bit more SPF the way Vogue edited it. I don't know how much she's using, but remember two fingers full, three if it's a really liquidy formula. SPF is your BFF, but it only works if you use enough of it. And it is literally an anti-cancer drug. It is a cancer protection skincare step. And it also helps with keeping your collagen, your elastin preserved, stopping things like acne from turning into scars, helping with hyperpigmentation, and all of those things that we use all of the other skincare products to treat or try to help with, or to just boost up our skin. If you're not using sunscreen, you're missing 90% of it. Next moisturizer that I like to use is by Tata Harper, Illuminating Moisturizer. Moisturizers over sunscreen. Should you do it? Should you not? This depends. And this gets into layering cosmetics and why it can be tricky. Normally people apply sunscreens last. The way sunscreens work is that they create a film on the face. In the words of my dear Dr. Dre, they set up on the skin to create this layer of protection. Now, if you're using moisturizers, especially moisturizers with oils or anything that could disrupt that sunscreen from actually creating that film on the skin, that isn't good. That's why in general, you know, sunscreen after moisturizers, but that doesn't always have to be, especially if it's a really occlusive moisturizer. And if the sunscreen has like beneficial ingredients, like some sunscreens have a blend of vitamin B like panthenol or niacinamide in them, or even vitamin C, you might want that closer to the skin, especially if the sunscreen is a light formula and the moisturizer is a heavier or thicker one. This one is an illuminating moisturizer for 135 freaking doll hairs. I'm just like, what is in this that makes it so expensive? Tata Harper does all of this clean marketing. And remember clean doesn't mean better, doesn't mean safer. Most of the time, uh, it actually means less preserved, uh, which is actually dangerous. And it means that it expires quicker so that you have to spend more money. I'm looking at you, goop.com. When we look at this ingredients list, we get a lot of stuff in here. If you're sensitive to plant extracts, you are going to want to avoid this. But if you're someone who likes to play around with things, this isn't a bad choice. We have lactobacillus ferment filtrate. This is great. This is a lysed or dead bacteria, but it can be very soothing to the skin. We do have some shea butter ethyl esters. These can be very expensive to formulate with, but very good, very soothing to the skin. We also have some safflower oleosomes. They're a lot less greasy than something like safflower oil. So this actually looks pretty light on the skin. We have some glycerin, some mango seed butter, 
butter, and then just like all of the plant extracts. So at least this has a lot of antioxidants and a lot of, you know, phytonutrients. Rice, cocoa, willow, sandalwood, arnica, rose, chamomile, basically all of the things. And if you are sensitive to plant stuff, don't use it. Now what's interesting is that we also have mica in here. They call this an illuminating moisturizer. What's illuminating about it is the flippin' mica. You're spending $130 for some plant oils and some mica. I do like the safflower eleasomes, I do like the lactobacillus, but everything else in here, I'm just like, we, we don't. This is a lot that we don't need. This is a very luxury product. It's like makeup disguised as a moisturizer, and I hate it when brands do this. Like, tell me that your makeup, or tell me that your skincare, or tell me that your Nikki tutorials launching a hybrid between makeup and skincare. But don't try to pull this shit on me. And don't get your mica from child labor. Thank you. My skincare is, as you can see, quite a lot. I don't know if Matt has picked up on really any of it. He's pretty simple with with his skincare. So as much as I like to try and use him as like a little guinea pig when it comes to trying out new things, he's pretty basic and his skin is really good. It's really just me that's extra in the house. Atlas is now also though, like always wanting me to spritz her face if I ever do sort of like a like a water spritz or a little hydration thing. She always just stands there with her eyes closed. So I give her a little spritz of some water or something like that. It's super cute. So as you can see, there's like a little sheen to it, but it's really subtle. And I just feel like the makeup just sits on top of it so nice. So I so appreciate that A, she shows us her skin up close and that B, she speaks about how she uses this product. She likes it for the sheen and that sheen is because of the mica. And especially, it sounds like she's using this as more of a primer than she is a moisturizer. And if you're looking for a really good makeup primer that has benefits for skin, get yourself some good skincare. Like this is all where it starts. I love to always start with this Fenty Beauty Spray. I also feel like if this is what Rihanna uses and this is what gets her skin the glow, then I probably should also drink it. I'm kidding, I'm not gonna drink it, don't drink this. Spray it, but you know, I just always think Rihanna. Do you see why I just want to hang out with her? Like. I feel like we could sit there and joke about eating skincare together. I agree, if Riri uses it, I would love to use it. I was not super impressed with Fenty skin because what I look for in a skincare product is very different. But I also think that the backing of Fenty skin and the creation of Fenty skin is very untraditional to other celebrity skincare brands because I found out more. And if you want like a compare and contrast between like Fenty skin and like Kylie skin, let me know <laughs> because, um, your acne big sister got some informations, some informations that don't violate HIPAA. This What It Do Makeup Refreshing Spray is definitely more of a makeup product. We have water, cyclopentasiloxane, dimethicone, propendiol, witch hazel, water, alcohol, etc. It's one of your makeup setting sprays, but just as Shay shows, you can use this before or after your makeup, after to set it or before to kind of prep it. There's nothing super glittery in here, which I appreciate, but she kind of used this moisturizer as a primer. Am I overwhelmed by the amount of products? Yes, but I am not mad. Please don't tell me that you do this every single day as a busy mom doing things with, I don't know, she launched some alcohol type of beverage company. She has a kid, like how do you have time to do this every day? I would really like to know and I don't think that's the truth. But again, I appreciate her showing us her skin. I appreciate the products she uses. There's a lot of budget friendly options in here that I can get behind and I have added multiple things to my cart that I really do not need to, but I am going to try them out so that you don't have to. And if you don't want to miss that upload, you know where the subscribe and like buttons are to signal to the algorithmic gods that you would like a follow-up. Let me know if I should test her skincare routine because this is a celebrity skincare routine that I would actually try, like I would be so down to do. And also remember to stay hydrated both orally and topically. Do remember to reapply that SPF and always be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.